Hey, this is Fred Ottman, Tugboat Typhoon, the Shockmaster, the B-A-double-D, Big Steel Man. And the card is subject to change. Watch it. Well, sometimes love feels just right. It feels so real. It feels just like a power driver. driver. <laughs> yeah, a power, power driver. driver. That's what I'm talking about. So me, personally, I'm actually a lifer. Uh, I don't right. remember a, a time that I wasn't watching professional wrestling. Uh, even my mom explains it to me as when, when I was a, a small child, you know, I would just stop in front of the TV and just sit and watch. And I'd just be quiet. It just totally zoned in. So I uh, always, always been a wrestling fan. And as I get older and even learn more about the business, it's like I continue to fall in love with it for different reasons. Just it blows my mind. And I'm like tugging on my mom's pants and stuff. And I'm like, mom, mom. And she's like, yeah, what? And I go, I want to do that. And I'm like pointing at the TV. Well, she looks and she goes, oh, you want to be like Macho Man and wear this cool sunglasses and say, oh, yeah, and do the elbow drop? And I go, no, I want to be the guy throwing snakes at people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now, your hosts of the Card Subject to Change podcast, the four frequency sake tag team champions of the world, the Wizard CZ and Never Wrong Nick. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting edition of the Card Subject to Change podcast, the podcast by the fan for the fan. We are brought to you. We are powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo, and protected by Jared Zook of Country Financial. I am, of course, your host, Never Wrong, Nick Bull. Joining me is my tag team partner, uh, co-champ of the For Frequency Sake Network. Uh, we wear those co-champ belts proudly around here as there is no off-season in wrestling. This is the Wizard CZ. Wiz, how you doing? Man, I, it has been a long weekend. I'm a little bit on the tired side, but it has been a great weekend. Yeah, uh, it, you're right. It's been a whirlwind. Uh, if, if you're not just talking about Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the days leading into it, of course, the 4th was on a Thursday. Some people worked Friday. Some people didn't work Friday. Some people, everybody I had off Thursday. It's just been a wild time um, for the, the time has flown by. It's been a whirlwind. And in that whirlwind has been uh, plenty of wrestling to consume and watch. And that's what we did this past weekend. Absolutely. And before we get into the big dogs, I got to give a shout out to Central Empire Wrestling and to Zawa Live. Both had shows up uh about 45 minutes from the Quad Cities in the Clinton uh, Clinton and Comanche, respectively. Both had excellent shows. Uh, unfortunately, I ducked out a little early of the CEW show. Uh, if you saw my post online, I was a little overheated. Uh, Rory Fox did offer to sell me some water, but I, uh, I declined. I could get water for free elsewhere. <laughs> uh, but no, we saw, I saw, I got to see a lot of, uh, a lot of friends of the podcast, a lot of former guests this weekend, including uh, including Matt Hatter at the Zawa show, and meet a couple of new contacts. So I was excited about that. Excellent work as always, CZ. Of course, uh, we'll keep our lips tight here on to who you booked this weekend. Uh, that'll be in the future. Uh, big guest to announce. Our lips are sealed. You were wondering how WWE could do it. Uh, WWE's been on a roll lately. Um with their premium live events. They've done a great job um, from month to month with them. And it seems like every time we review a uh, WWE PLE on here, we are giving it rave reviews and talking about how much we liked it. It happened twice this weekend, folks. I don't know how they did it, but they pulled it off. Uh, Money in the Bank yesterday as we record this. We record this on Sunday evening. And, of course, NXT Heat Wave just wrapped up, and that's when we're recording post-Heat Wave. Both of these shows were extraordinary. Um, I was totally drawn in and perplexed by the NXT show and love how these cards only have five or six matches on them. Each match is given its time to breathe. Each match is given its time to go out there and do its thing. And both of these pay-per-views, if you have not watched them yet, Money in the Bank and or NXT Heat Wave 
are can't miss pay-per-views in my opinion you need to go back and watch them a lot of stuff happen some good in-ring action some good storyline development stuff um but i loved both these shows and of course we're going to talk about nxt heatwave first since it's the freshest in our minds can i just throw out i want to give credit to wwe for a six o'clock start time on both of these shows yes um, especially on a sunday night you look at the competition where uh where tk throws out 1200 matches and it goes until 11 30 at night and i gotta work it i gotta work the next morning it just, listen, forbidden it's door, forbidden door only went four hours so you gotta you gotta <laughs> get gotta slack there <clears throat> okay i will but but the six o'clock start time if we had uh, if it had been on at seven we'd we'd be still still watching the main event at this point uh so kudos to uh wwe for giving us that earlier start time this weekend i like that a lot i hope it continues uh, we had some really good matches and the thing that i want to point out you don't see this often but all five active titles in nxt were on the line tonight yeah yes they were yes they were um you had both men's and women's north american championships you had both men's and women's titles and then of course you had the nxt tag teams uh, featured on the card as well. So, yes, five matches, five titles, all up for grabs in the NXT world tonight. Uh, and the show started with who has been quite possibly the most polarizing figure in NXT right now, Oba Femi, and how powerful he is and how he's burst onto the scene. Um, you know, doesn't have a lot of matches under his belt, but he is evolving and becoming right before our eyes uh, this legitimate monster with a pretty good move set in the ring um a collegiate athlete um i believe at alabama but has really put that behind him and is now uh this legit monster on the wrestling scene he is the north american champion in nxt right now and he took on what booker t and vic joseph were proclaiming as the greatest north american champion of all time tonight wesley quite the size differential uh wesley had his work cut out for him I, I never had any doubt that Oba was going to win this match. I didn't think they would take this away from him. Um, but no. these went out. Um, the contrast in styles, the contrast in sizes is really apparent in this match. But it worked well in this match. Uh, using Oba's power, uh, you know, throwing Wesley several times in this match. Wesley, with his with his heart and staying in this match, kept him in it. But in the end, it was too much. Oba Femi is just too much for whoever's in the ring with him. No, no, no diss to Wesley, but I think that title staying on Oba Femi for quite some time. I, I think you're correct. I really do. You said one thing that I want to touch on, and that is Wesley's heart. Uh, Wesley, uh, I'm not his biggest fan. I didn't like him in the MSK days. Uh, I couldn't stand him or his partner. Uh, he's he's grown on me a little. He's a fantastic athlete. I'm not knocking his in-ring ability. Just I don't gravitate towards him. Uh, but you mentioned his heart. Uh, reminds me a lot of the the true greatest North American champion in NXT, Johnny Gargano, who had a lot of heart. You got to get that Johnny Gargano plug in there, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, was he, 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 was a North American, he was a North American champion, wasn't he? Three times. That's right. Jeez, that belt, that belt hasn't been around very long, but then again, it has been a lot around when you talk about Gargano holding it. He's been on the main roster for quite some time now. Um, but Oba Femi looked very impressive in this match. Uh, I know they got big plans for him coming down the road. You got to think he's going to be on the main roster sooner rather than later. They just want to get him some more experience. But, man, he is a force to be reckoned with. Good opener of a match. Uh, crowd was into this big time. I was into it, too. Um, right away, I'm like, wow, they've picked up where Money in the Bank left off, and they're really taking the ball and running with this. So props to the NXT crew for kicking off the show right and for putting together a great pay-per-view all together with, uh, with Heat Wave. Oh, a striker chiming in here, giving me a, giving me a hard time saying Adam Cole Bay Bay is better than Johnny. I disagree. He's up there. He's, he's, he's up there. He's, he's, I put him number two, uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, man, no, Opa Femi is just a monster. And you could tell because Wesley got the crap kicked out of him throughout this match. Uh, was able to pull off some offense, but just this was one-sided in my opinion, uh, in a good way. 
it wasn't it, I, it wasn't a squash. Uh, it was it was a good match. Uh, styles make fights, as we like to say, and I enjoyed this match thoroughly. I thought it put uh, it put Obafemi that much further up with the North American title run, and they teased it later on with a backstage segment. You got to wonder what's next for Wesley. Yeah, I seen something flash up on my phone before we went on the air. His he's addressing his future on Tuesday night. Uh, so just two short nights away, um, Wesley uh, will be addressing the crowd and, and go from there. I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't think he's going to retire, but I don't know who they have interrupt his promo to set his new program, but it'll be interesting to see um, as the men's NXT show kicked off with the North American title. It was followed by the women's North American championship. Your champion, Kalani Jordan, uh, your newly crowned NXT women's champion, I believe she won that title at the last pay-per-view of nxt am i right big ladder match yeah for, yep. for the women's yep. north american yes and she's taking on soul ruka who's kind of been fresh onto the scene um i think there's big things in store for soul ruka she's athletic she's got the look um she does some innovative stuff in the ring that i haven't seen anybody else do before which is i think her sticking point um i thought me i was rooting for soul to pull this out no, not gonna lie nothing against kalani jordan um, but I just like Sol Ruka a little bit better. But Kalani Jordan showed why she belongs, showed why she's uh, the NXT Women's North American Champion. Uh, I think she's going to hold on to that belt for a while. Um, Sol Ruka was a good first test for her, and I think I expect big things from Sol Ruka going forward here in the future. Oh, I oh for sure. And, you know, the build-up to this match, these two are good friends. Uh, I had the pre-show on for a little bit. Uh, they showed a package where, or a, a for the a package in TV terms is a, a video piece dedicated to a specific subject. Uh, Nick knew that because we're both uh, old TV, uh, old TV show, TV hands. Uh, but they were working out together, go, building up to this match, and it was interesting because they would uh, they would be cheering each other on, and they would it, you'd see one do oh. A piece part of a workout and then the other would follow and do it themselves and just back and forth and you could really tell the chemistry was there in this match the the obviously they they have to be good friends well they don't have to be but they, they you can tell the friendship is there with the chemistry that they had together in the ring mm -hmm. <clears throat> all four ladies showcased tonight on the nxt heat wave premium live event i think are big time players in the future whether it's an nxt or wwe i think all four of these ladies kalani jordan sol ruka roxanne perez lola vice i think they all have very bright futures uh, in the squared circle um nxt's done a very good job of finding the talent and now starting to make it better um form it mold it into what they want it to be for a main level star and these four ladies that were on the card tonight, I thought, did a great job for women's wrestling, did a great job for showcasing NXT and what they do for women's wrestling. And I uh, just wanted to give props to all four of them. I know we weren't talking about the women's championship match yet, but all four women, uh, I thought, really did a superb job tonight on tonight's show. NXT has done a brilliant job of building their women's roster. And the the commentary team will be the first to tell you it's the best women's roster in the business, and I don't disagree. I don't. There's a lot of good stuff going on on NXT. It's kind of my closet. It's it's kind of my favorite show to watch out of the week. I know there's Raw. I know there's SmackDown. I know there's Dynamite. But there's something about there's something about NXT. I just really like what they're doing right now. Um, I just think their attention to detail right now is second to none. Like they're just doing great things, and this pay per view shows it. Um, five matches. I I was texting a friend of ours uh, uh, before we went on the air, and I'm like five for five. They went five for five tonight. And uh, my friend thought maybe that it was better than Money in the Bank, and I can't, I can't say, oh, that's crazy for saying that. Money in the Bank was really good, but Heat Wave picked up where it left off and kind of just boom ran and did a great job of itself. Two completely yeah. different pay per views, but both were very good pay per views. Be interested. I, I, this might be NXT's best offering of the year uh, here with Heat Wave, and I could say the same for Money in the Bank outside of Mania. Um, Money in the Bank was excellent too. 
and we'll talk about money in the bank a little bit later, but for sure. Can I just uh can I just throw out I'm a big fan of the black and gold era of NXT. That is where I came into it. I love everything about it. It's not the same feel as the black and gold era as far as the aura that NXT, the persona that NXT is putting out, but the talent feels very much right on par with the with the black and gold era, in my opinion. You've got some great, great talent both on the men's and the women's side in NXT. And I'm I'm excited to see where some of these people count where some of these people go. You know, the, it's onward and upward for all of them here, in my opinion. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh after after the women's North American championship match, we have the tag team championship match. Uh, your current champions, Nathan Frazier, Black and Brave Academy graduate, uh, and Axiom taking on Chase U and Andre Chase and was it Duke? Duke Hudson. Duke Hudson were the representatives for Chase U. I'm not going to lie here. I was rooting for Chase U. Um, I don't know, man. You got to give it to a guy who can go in there and wrestle in a button down long sleeve shirt with a sweater over it <laughs> and Andre Chase. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very true. Uh he looked, the, it looks good on him and he, he wrestled in it and that's I'm like my God I couldn't wrestle excuse me I couldn't wrestle with that gear. No but they did no. a pretty good job. Um the whole Chase U thing is kind of an NXT kind of an NXT story and, and it, it's it's cool. It's funny what they what they've done each week. They got some funny stuff going on. Uh, but I was kind of rooting for Chase U here. I'm not going to lie. I thought this was the moment uh, for Chase U to take the titles and to be back on top of the tag team game. But Axiom and Frazier have shown uh, shown me again why they are the tag champs. They just seem to be beating all comers here uh, after coming up just short in the Dusty Classic against Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker. Yeah, it was a little bit ago, but they were in the finals in the Dusty Classic against them two and losing. They've kind of put that behind them. Uh, have grabbed the belts and haven't looked back and have, you know, become uh, the team to beat now on NXT. Uh, they're a fun team to watch, uh, a smaller team that complement each other very well. Um, hung in there with some bigger guys tonight and we're able to get the, able to get the championship. So I, I, I got nothing but love right now for Nathan Frazier and Axiom. Uh, I'd like to see them continue their run. And I thought they did a great job tonight against Chase U. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed this match. Can I just uh, can I throw this out there? Sure. The storyline building into this match is that Nathan Frazier was considerably late getting to the arena. He arrived two hours before their match, and Axiom was preparing himself to go two on one against Chase University. Part of me was waiting for the heel turn between one of the two of them uh, if they were to lose the belts. I would like you. I was rooting for Chase U in this one here. Doesn't, but, it, doesn't it seem a little early, though, for a heel turn from one of them? I mean, like, they haven't been a team. They haven't been on this run very long. I get I just, what you're saying. I think it's a little premature. I get what you're saying, but there's been a lot of tension between the two of them. With Nathan Frazier being focused elsewhere, you know, he went after the Heritage Cup. His, his focus is not on those tag team titles. And I... I'm... I think you're right. I think it is a little early for a heel turn, but I, I'm trying to wrap my brain because where they're to, where the story's going, I can't tell who, who's going to turn. Is it going to be Axiom for being frustrated that Fraser is not Fraser is not focused on their title run, or is it Nathan Fraser who's just going to get sick of Axiom giving him crap all the time? That remains to be seen. That's a good point. Um, I missed that part about being two hours, getting there two hours before the show. I was probably out of the room grabbing something to drink. Uh, so I missed that part. But that's something that remains to be seen. They, they they seem to be beating all beating all comers right now and retaining their belts. But maybe the only thing that can beat them is themselves. And them not getting along may cost the belt. Something to look forward to here in the future. Absolutely. Uh, I want to I wanna talk about the women's title match because that's what's next on the card. But Kudos to both of these women for putting on a hell of a show. Roxanne Perez is a star, no She's matter great. how you how She's you look great. at it. She's great. <clears throat> um, a little surprised she's not on the main roster. Um, yes. 
I was surprised she wasn't called up. I know we talked about this when we were watching Money in the Bank last night, and I'll and I'll save my commentary for Lyra Valkyrie for the women's Money in the Bank match. But a little shocked that Roxanne Perez wasn't called up when she was is kind of where I'm getting at. Like I think Roxanne, <coughs> excuse me, I think Roxanne could be on the main roster right now and making an impact as well. But she is wearing the NXT Women's Title proudly. She's beating all comers. And she defeated Lola Vice tonight. I thought Lola Vice was the, the 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 best threat to her title thus far. Lola Vice has been on quite a roll, if you can remember, um, winning some key matches on NXT, winning that NXT Underground match against Natalia, or excuse me, against Shayna Baszler. Excuse me, Shayna Baszler, um, kind of put her pushed her way to the top. Um, she kind of had a rocket strapped to her. And here she is, boom, ready for a title shot. I thought maybe this might have been the night Roxanne dropped it and then would move on to um, to the main roster, but not the case. She retains. Lola Vice still looked like a million bucks in the loss, but, man, Roxanne Perez just took another step in, in my book and just how good she really is, man. She is good. Oh, absolutely. And I'll kind of I'll kind of touch on what we talked about last night. Uh, I think Roxanne is still on NXT for a reason. I think they need her to to lift everyone else up before they bring her up into onto the main roster. It's very similar to uh, we talked about this last night off air, but it's very similar to Ilya Dragunov, who has been ready for the main roster for quite a while, but it took him a little bit to get put onto the main roster right. for that same reason. He they needed him there to elevate the other talent to make that other talent better. It's it. I don't want to say she's carrying the women's division. I mean, she is to an extent, but everyone is proving they belong in the WWE in NXT, doing a great job. Roxanne is just great at making people look absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I will. Um, this will probably be the first match I go back and watch over again. Um, I want to watch this and then the main event again. Um, I know there's a couple things I missed in this match. Um, I looked up, I'm like, what? And then the match continues. I'm like, I got to go back and watch this match again. But Roxanne uh, really just put the flag in the ground why she is the best female wrestler on NXT right now. Um, yeah. One of the best in all of WWE. Um, I, I'm, I'm that confident in her and her abilities as, as she continues on her championship reign. I don't know who they feed her next. That's a good question. I, I, I'm not sure who's next, um, but I'm sure they're going to shine in the feud against Roxanne. I agree. I, I'm excited to see who they bring up against her next because I don't know. The, there's so much depth to that roster. It could be anybody. Speaking of depth, there was a lot of depth to the main event of NXT Heat Wave, a fatal four-way, if you will. Um, Trick <laughs> Williams had his hands full. He had to defend the belt against three other gentlemen and did not need to factor into the pinfall or submission um, to lose his title. So the, the, the cards are stacked against him. It was Trick Williams against All Ego, Ethan Page. Mm-hmm. The chairman, Sean Spears, and is it Jevion Will Evans? Javon. Javon. I'm sorry. I always want to say Javion. It's Javon Evans, a uh, young 20-year-old star on NXT, finds his way into this match, has earned his way here, and definitely showed out maybe the breakout star of this match, uh, featured this four-way match. It's hard to get uh, a fatal four-way, and all four guys look good, get their stuff in, but these guys did a good job doing it. They're pros. Um and for the main in, in the main event of Heat Wave did not disappoint by any stretch of the means. Um, some very creative booking here, some cool spots. Um, yeah, uh, I, 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 I don't. I could go back and talk about the different moments in the match. I just know that sometimes people get lost in a four way, and I thought all four guys shined in this match. Yes. Uh, the ending, I'll let you talk about the ending booking and how it ended. Um, I thought it was genius. I thought it was great. Um, and to have 
Ethan Page come out of this as the champion, that was the only way he could become champion, in my opinion, was how he got the win, <laughs> which makes it even better. It makes it even better. You know, Trick Williams is beside himself, but I'm going to have you go ahead, CZ, and talk about the ending and how Ethan Page did become the champion. So I went into this match, and I believe I texted you right before the match went on. I'm like, I want either Spears or Page to walk away with that belt tonight. I was rooting for Sean Spears. I think he, uh, they both, they both deserve to hold that title, but I think Spears deserves it a little bit more in my opinion, but I'm not upset by, by Ethan Page walking out with that title and what an ending. Uh, there were some great spots. Like you said, we could talk about those spots all day. I'm surprised Javon Evans was able to get back into the match after he went splat on the table. Uh, with the way he landed there, but Trick William, you got you've got Javon Evans, you've got Trick Williams in the uh, in the ring. The trick knee gets hit on both Javon and Ethan Page. Ethan Page just flops right onto Javon Evans, and for some reason, Sean Spears is out there holding Trick Williams back, preventing him from getting in the ring. Not just to try and prevent him from ending the match. I mean, if you're, if you're thinking about it logically, you, you wouldn't want to prevent someone from breaking a pinfall so that you get another chance to make the pinfall yourself. But at the same time, both those guys, both Paige and Spears were very adamant about getting that belt off of trick Williams. So I love the ending. Uh, there was a great spot early on where uh, I believe it was Paige Spears hit his C4 off of the top rope and Paige came in and tossed him out of the ring. I thought Paige had it right then and there. Yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> this was, I love the way this ending was booked. It was fantastic. And I, I couldn't think of a better way to end it. And now, now, <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have Trick. Now you have Trick chasing. Now you have Trick chasing Ethan Page. Uh, Ethan Page winning it maybe in a cowardly way by just falling on the guy, not knowing he was on him and getting the three count was perfect. Um, I, I would say Sean Spears grabbing Trick Williams was maybe instinct. Maybe he didn't know that it was a three count going on. Maybe he just grabbed him the first thing he's seen, but Trick's face getting pulled away as he's losing his title was a good, was a good picture to have uh, well done by WWE and N NXT, not only on this main event, but the whole episode. Um, absolutely love um, heat wave. I give it an a, it was that yeah. good uh, top to bottom. I, I give it a, five for five on their matches. I give it an a, it was excellent. Um, can't wait to go back and watch a few things from this, but coming off money in the bank, uh, you know, coming off what I'm talking about is, you know, our, our episode title here, it's Tiffy time coming off last night and everything that happened last night, NXT definitely delivered and, and gave us a great show to talk about here on a Sunday evening. And you and I talked about it a little off air about whether the show and you brought it up on the air, whether heat wave was better than money in the bank. I, you know, now that we've kind of fleshed things out a little bit, I'm going to say it was. And there's a very specific reason that I'm going to say it was. I give it an A also. And when we talk, when we finish up talking about Money in the Bank, I'll tell you my letter grade then. And I'll tell you why it got the letter grade it did. Okay. Uh, most of you probably can guess why. But we'll get to that. Right now, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> pay some dues to our sponsors and to the network. And after we come back, uh, we'll have our weekly moment of focus with our good friend, the feline phenom, JT Energy. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Football season may be over, but for frequency's sake, still has you covered for all your sporting needs. Tune in every Sunday when the best professional wrestling podcast around, cards subject to change, gets you caught up on everything inside the ropes. They won't miss a count with weekly analysis and interviews. More into auto racing? We've got a double dose for you on the track. Tune in to Fast Money with Rod Villagomez each week and win some money with the quickest bets in all of sports. Want more insight from Pit Row? Check out the Green, White, and Checkered podcast where they give 
their insight on everything happening on and off the track. Need your basketball fix? Points in the Paint has you covered with live shows every other week looking at everything in the association. Back by popular demand, we have the return of The Payoff Pitch, FFSQC's baseball show, covering you on news around the MLB. If you're missing football, don't fret. Mark and Dan still have you covered in the football lounge. Missing Joe Winkle? Probably not, but he's still here talking sports on educated ignorance. Football season might be over, but we've still got you covered. For frequency's sake, you know what we mean. For frequency's sake is brought to you by Durham Remodeling, serving the Quad City area's remodeling and repair needs since 1973. Clint's Draft House, grab a bite and a pint. 7th Street Moline. Low Pies, New York-style pizza served up by the Slice or Pie, Davenport. Lifted Energy, energy drinks, coffee, donuts, and more. Hashtag get lifted. Atomic Sports Cards and Collectibles. Sports cards and memorabilia, vintage clothing, hats, pennants, and more. Ryan Allison Tattoo. Step into the vibrant world of tattoos with Ryan Allison. And a cut above. Offering quality custom woodwork designed specifically around our customers. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the show. You know, Nick, before we uh, before we toss it over to JT Energy, uh, our network, the For uh, For Frequency Sake Podcast Network, here was built on one thing, and that is fantasy football. Yep. And I think we need to talk about this a little bit here. Uh, we they are doing their annual Toys for Tots fantasy football leagues coming up. Uh, so you don't want to miss a chance to be crowned the best fantasy football player in the Quad Cities. And it helps money. It helps raise money for a great cause. Uh, I remember Nick and I were out uh, shopping for Toys for Tots and made the delivery to the to the drop-off location. It was, it was a fun time. And none of that would be possible without the support of our fans here on both Card Subject to Change and the 4 Fantasy Sake Network. Um <clears throat> We've got uh, we've got a big representative. Yeah, on even our more side reason, even here. more reason to play fantasy football. Representing the Card Subject to Change podcast in those fantasy football leagues will be the one called Manders. So you can test your uh, not your in ring skills with Manders, but your fantasy skills with Manders. Um, we'll, we'll we'll believe that he has the better in ring skills. You don't want to mess with him. Um, if you've seen one of his matches lately, but yes, Manders will be representing uh, the Card Subject to Change podcast. And make sure you sign up uh, so you can test your metal and your will uh, in fantasy wise against the one called Manders uh, this football season. And of course, there are other local celebrities being involved. There are some great prizes, uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, professional athletes, news personalities. And if you do want to sign up here, head on over to For Frequency Sake Facebook page or their page on X and follow the links there to sign up for. Uh, for the Toys for Tots Fantasy Football League this year. Plenty of time to sign up. May as well do it early, get it done, so you don't forget about it when football season does roll around. You don't want to be in scramble mode, and it gives you a chance to play fantasy football with the one called Manders. All the more reason to help out a good cause. Absolutely. And with that being said, we're going to uh, we're going to let our good friend JT Energy take over for just a couple minutes here and – Give us our moment of focus. Oh, well, hello. It's me, JT Energy. And this week on a moment of focus with the feline phenom JT Energy, the guys are talking about NXT and money in the bank. And I want you to focus on one thing, and that's opportunity. Because the winners of the money in the bank, they have all year to find that one perfect opportunity to cash in. Unfortunately, Drew McIntyre chose the wrong opportunity. But you, even right now, while you're listening, while you're watching to the Cards Up to Change podcast, you can take an opportunity to think to yourself, what can I do right now to take the right step forward? What can I do to put something in place to change a bad habit. What can I do to cash in an opportunity in my own life? Think about that. This has been a moment of focus with the feline phenom, 
J T Energy. You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, but I think Drew McIntyre probably could have listened to that uh, bit of tidbit of knowledge from JT Energy uh, just now and probably had a better night than he did last night. I, I completely agree. <laughs> what I want to know, JT has turned himself into a cartoon somehow the last three weeks he's, he's been on. I want to be a cartoon. The animation, I know these secrets. The animation is superb. I'm just – I'm <laughs> impressed. I want to know what he's going to look like each week. <laughs> <laughs> What he looks like, what he's going to say, always uh, always right, good to hear right. from our good friend JT Energy. So uh, stay tuned for another episode, another edition of Moment of Focus next week. Uh, <clears throat> but we've got uh, we've got another show to talk about in this heavily loaded, this fully loaded weekend of wrestling, and that's Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank uh, took place same arena last night in Toronto. Uh, the one, the only, the beautiful, the greatest, the GOAT, Trish Stratus, was your host. She looked amazing as always. Always good to see her on screen. Uh, love that they've got a relationship, her and WWE, where they can bring her back whenever for, for these different events. Always good to see her. The show kicks off with the men's Money in the Bank, which uh, everybody's like, ooh, you know, we're going to get a cash in tonight, you know. And and I think I think Stryker made a point earlier that there wasn't a women's championship match on the card, which was kind of weird. You think they would have that a women's championship match on there, uh, just you know, for the illusion, the teasing of uh, cashing in that possible briefcase, but not so fast on that one. Uh, the men's money in the bank kicked off the show. The six participants, if I can remember them all correctly, were Drew McIntyre, Yeet, Jey Uso, Andrade, Carmelo Hayes, L. A. Knight, yeah, yeah. And Chad Gable, am I right? Correct. Okay. Uh, before this match started, what were your thoughts of this Money in the Bank lineup? Um, I'm not going to lie. I thought the match before the show, like I thought like it's lacking somebody. Like this match is lacking somebody, I felt. And that's no disrespect to the six guys involved. I just thought. I thought maybe this match was lacking one person, but I'm not, you know, it just felt that way. There really wasn't uh, someone who can go super fast paced, if you know what I mean. Like, a, I know he's not with the company any longer, but like a ricochet. They're, uh, they're really, it felt it was lacking someone who just had that speed aspect. I mean, I'll give credit to Carmelo Hayes. He was probably the closest thing to it but i don't think he has that that level of adrenaline that pushes him to that faster point like say like the example gave, like a ricochet <laughs> not yet not yet not yet uh going into this match i think we both agreed on who was going to win i was really rooting for chad gable i thought it would have been a feather in his cap to walk away with the with the briefcase but I don't much like the ladder match last week at Forbidden Door. I don't think there was a question as to who was winning this match. When I seen Drew McIntyre win the final qualifying match on Raw over Sheamus and Ilya Dragunov, I'm like, he's winning. He's just, he's just, he's winning. He's he's been at the top of the program when it comes to promos. He's been in 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 he's he's featured in the main program. Um, this thing with punk and him has really gotten out of hand. It's getting buzzworthy. That's what people are talking about. It just made sense for him to win. Um, no disrespect to the other five gentlemen in this match. Um, and, and going back to the comment you made, uh, Wiz about the TNT title match, uh, the ladder match for Ben door. Only like two guys <clears throat> doing that. I just drew McIntyre was the only logical winner to me in this, in this, in my opinion. And, um, the match didn't seem very long in my opinion. Um, maybe no, the shortest, was... maybe the shortest match of the night on the card. Um, if you want to get down to times and stuff, that's what it felt like. I don't know if you got the times in front of you or not CZ, but I, I do. It, is it, is it the shortest match of the night? It actually was not. The next match is the shortest match on the card. 
Uh, it was shorter than the women's match, the women's wins money in the bank match. Uh, went about it went about sixteen thirty. I I don't know I. Hmm. Like you said uh, to start things off, you felt that the match was lacking as far as competitors go. I felt the match was lacking as far as it. It didn't feel like it lived up to previous Money in the Bank matches, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it did. It didn't. You're right. I don't think it fell flat by any means, but it definitely was not up there as one of the best matches. Best. Money I think in the maybe Bank as fans were programmed, were programmed that every Money in the Bank or every ladder match has to have that big send away spot where two or three guys get, can possibly get hurt. That did not have this. This really didn't have that – oh, excuse me here. I bumped my hand. <laughs> this really did not have that go-home, holy crap spot. Um, no. If, if, you, if you know what I'm getting at. And maybe that took away from this match. I don't know. I'm not poo-pooing on it. I'm not saying this match stunk, but I'm just going to say, like, this match lacked a little something. Still a good match. I still enjoyed it. Had a great time watching it. Um, you know, reveled when I when Drew won when I was like, yeah, I got that right, whatever. But um, it just to me lacked lacked the performance that another any other ladder match would have if there was a yes. different competitor in there, and it lacked that one big spot. However, I'm not poo pooing it. I thought it was an excellent match with what they did. I agree. I agree. And you know, speaking of. Speaking of pretty good, of excellent match, I don't know if I'd call the next one excellent, but it was a really good showing. Uh, and I think this next match, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of what the the final decision, but I think this was Braun Breaker's coming out party. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of the booking decision earlier, but I think bigger things are on the horizon. I think maybe on SummerSlam, Braun will take on. We're talking about Braun Breaker and Sami Zayn here for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, a fun match. I, I I liked this match. I loved everything about it, but the but 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 the ending or, or but but the result. Um, I thought Braun looked like a million bucks in this. Sammy uh, has that ability. Um, you know, he's made a Teflon. He gets his ass kicked, and still looks good. Um, yeah. He made Braun Breaker look really good in this match. Just a testament to Sammy Zayn and how good of a worker he is. Um, you know, Sami Zayn in his home country, he got the fans behind him. I thought they were going to put it on Braun. I thought they were going to take it off Sammy and put it on Braun, but I think maybe it happens at SummerSlam. Maybe it happens, you know, you know, somewhere a little bit bigger. I don't know. Um, but this was Braun Breaker's uh, pay-per-view debut uh, on the main card. Yeah. And what a showing it was. Um, maybe this, maybe this loss, so to say, to, to Braun, um, points him in a different direction, um, maybe takes him back a little bit, refocuses him, and then comes back even bigger, badder than ever. Um, but I, I really liked this match. I did. I liked everything but the result. Uh, both these men put out went out there and put on a great contest, and I hope we see them again at SummerSlam. Sign me up for Sammy and Braun Part 2 at SummerSlam, please. I agree. I agree. I think it'd be a great, a great follow-up. Uh, Braun did lose clean, uh, but the way he performed in this match, it did not make him look bad at all. He didn't lose any momentum, in my opinion, by losing to Sammy Sammy last night. Not at all. We are Card Subject to Change, the podcast by the fan for the fan. I'm your host, Never Wrong, Nick Bull, enjoyed by the Wizard CZ. We are powered by Low Pies Pizza. We are built by Durham Remodeling. We're colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo and protected by Jared's Duke of Country Financial. We want to thank our fine sponsors for being on board with us. Uh, we could not do this without them, and we're having the time of our lives doing this. This is episode 134. We're not too far away from our two-year birthday, CZ. We've been doing this for almost two years. The time is flying when you're having fun. Of course, it's Tiffy time. No, nope. you're forgetting a match. No, it's always Tiffy time. Well, it's always Tiffy time. <laughs> but I think before we get to... I was forgetting a match. <laughs> I think before we get to Tiffy time, we need to address the elephant in the room here. 
And that is the Damian Priest, Seth Rollins, and what became a triple threat with the cashing in Drew McIntyre. <laughs> Biggest thing to talk about in this match is what everybody's talking about, and that's the uh, that's the spot where somebody missed their cue. Uh, I don't know who it was. I can I don't know if it was in the truck. I don't know if it was Drew, but definitely Seth Rollins had Priest down for a three count. That never happened. Those shoulders did not come up. This and was <clears throat> this was addressed afterwards to Triple H in the media, uh, the media scram afterwards, and Triple H sided with the ref and said the referee's decisions are final. So um, that's how they're playing this off. But yes, Seth Rollins did have Drew, or excuse me, Damian Priest pinned. One, two, three. I think it, it took, two. It, I think it two. Maybe Drew's music was supposed to hit. That's what I'm thinking too. Because there was a big pause after three. Yeah, it took, two, it took two or three seconds for uh, for well, Drew's music pause. to hit there, after. Yeah, there was a big pause. I think had it happened at two, you would have had a better moment. It was very awkward since Priest didn't kick out. I don't know if Priest hit his head and forgot to kick out, or what. Regardless, Seth Rollins could be and should be, for all uh, practical purposes, your new world heavyweight champion. Instead, Damian Priest retains. Um, I know we're going to talk about the cash-in in a second. I'll let you talk about that, but I just want to talk about this. And, and I've said this, and I've felt this, that maybe Damian Priest's reign has not been the greatest since he won at WrestleMania. That's not his fault. I don't think he's doing anything wrong. I think he's done everything right in this reign. I think it's how it's been booked, okay? That's where I'm coming from. This match, though, was the best match of his title reign, the match last night against Seth Rollins and, of course, Drew McIntyre interceding yes. or interceding himself. This was his best match. This was a big win for him to get on a pay-per-view at Money in the Bank with someone trying to cash in on him. This solidifies him and his reign, in my opinion. Priest looked like a million bucks outside of that snafu where he didn't kick out. Um, and the fact that he's able to beat not only Seth Rollins, but also Drew McIntyre in this match um, just elevates him more, in my opinion. We were getting, you know, Judgment Day wasn't at ringside by request of, of, of Damian Priest. We're going to get the breaking apart of the Judgment Day in the coming in the coming months. We're going to get that. Um, maybe it starts tomorrow night. Maybe maybe Damian says something to piss off Finn Balor in the Judgment Day locker room on Raw um, and, and drives that wedge a little bit because there is a little bit of something going on there between him and Finn Balor right now if you haven't picked it up. Something's going on there. Uh, maybe Finn's going to side with uh, Liv Morgan. Who knows? But this win for Damian Priest was huge. Um, it solidifies him as a big-time contender, as a big-time champion, and it also is going to further that Judgment Day storyline um, when we pick up action come Monday Night Raw. Absolutely. And I will tell you, this is what uh, – that that moment where there was the miscue did bring my grading of this whole pay-per-view down a little bit. But life happens. Things happen. People make mistakes. You know, it, it's it's entertainment. It's wrestling. Like, things happen. So I'm not upset. And I think it was very well done. And this is the, I believe, the third time in history where the Money in the Bank briefcase holder has failed to cash in successfully. I believe it's three. Or may, is it three or four? I'm trying to recount the number because Baron Corbin failed to cash in. Okay. Damian Sandow failed to cash in. This would be four. John Cena failed to cash in as well, correct? Maybe it's, maybe it's five. All right, who am I missing? Did Ken Anderson, <clears throat> Mr. Anderson, fail to cash in? I don't think he failed his cash in. I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering history, his briefcase was won off of him by I want to say Edge. Okay. I, I don't. If if I'm wrong, please 
leave it in the comments, correct me, but I believe he lost his briefcase to another competitor, so he didn't get to cash in. Okay. Much like Otis lost to The Miz. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> That's fair enough. I just had a bug fly in my eye. <laughs> 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 it's dangerous out here in the summertime. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> That's what you get for for being out in the High View Lounge, but I don't blame you. It's a gorgeous thing or a gorgeous evening. Gorgeous but, evening. Our friend, of course, Striker, bailing us out. It is for uh, Sandow, <clears throat> Baron Corbin, John Cena, and now Drew McIntyre are the four that have failed to cash in at Money in the Bank. Thank you, Striker, for for following along and correcting us. Um, I so, may not never be wrong, but I am occasionally right. You are occasionally right. There you go. <laughs> occasionally right. <with> easy. <laughs> Nick, I'm I'm hearing some ticking and it sounds like an alarm, like like some kind of time is happening here. I wonder what time it could be. If it wasn't before now, it is. It is legit tiffy time all the time now. Um, <laughs> once again, I thought maybe one or two of these women could possibly win it and be a threat. Um, I did have the vision of maybe Chelsea Green winning it and just becoming this miserable briefcase holder, making life miserable for everybody else. But I think the right choice was made. They can do so much with Tiffany Stratton. They can wait on it. They can do it right away. Whatever way it's going to do, it's going to be great. She's going to be great in this position. Um, you know, the snobby, good-looking girl. Uh, the, the center of the universe is, revolves around her, and now she's got the money in the bank briefcase. It's going to be weird. I was thinking about this before we went on the show. We had Damian Priest have that briefcase for so long, and now the men's money in the bank's out of the picture for the next year. Yeah. So they really can focus this on Tiffany Stratton. They really can focus it on the women's division. I think it's a great move. Um, win or lose, whenever she cat if she cashes in, she's still going to be a star because she's that good. Um, I just wonder how soon it's going to happen. I just, I got these grand visions of it happening at SummerSlam. Um, that'd be cool, but I don't. Maybe that's too soon. But everybody has been put on alert. Tiffy time. Tiffany Stratton, your women's Money in the Bank winner. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what they do with this storyline with her. You know what I'm interested to see? What she does with the briefcase. Everybody for the last, almost everybody has their own design to the briefcase. Oh, dude, it's gonna be pink and bedazzled. <laughs> I imagine, I imagine it being smaller when she recreates it, being more <laughs> purse size, so <laughs> so cool. she can have it with maybe a strap so she can carry it over her shoulder to the ring. Uh, <laughs> That's a good idea. I don't know, I, Pink and bedazzled for sure. I can't wait to see what her briefcase looks like. Uh, I just, I thought this was the match of the night. I'm just going to throw it out there. I thought this was the match of the night. I thought the women did a brilliant job. The table spot with Chelsea uh, was the highlight of the match, in my opinion, other than other than Miss Tiffany Stratton coming away with the That briefcase. was a Matt Hardy-esque fall that Chelsea Green took. That was amazing. <laughs> That was amazing. The women's, was. the women's Money in the Bank match was excellent. They did a great job with it. Um, had a share of high spots. You know, it exceeded my expectations. It was definitely better than the men's match. Uh, the men's match wasn't horrible uh, to say, but the women just took it and went to the next level. I'm really, yes. really proud of all the participants of this match. Um be honest, I thought it was going to kick off the show. Um, but they had it in the right spot um, right before the main event. And I thought, hey, I thought it kind of gave off the image, the the message to the main event. Hey, you better bring it because we just brought it, you know, type of deal. And they did. The women's match was excellent. Uh, for anybody watching, I think you'll agree that the women's match was probably, the women's ladder match was probably the best match on the Money in the Bank card. Um Last night, I thought it was. I I, I thought it was, um, without a doubt, the the best match on the night. So, 
Uh, I wonder if you feel the same way. If you do, hit us up on socials. Let us know what you thought of the women's Money in the Bank match at uh, Money in the Bank. Yeah, please do. Please. And I'll tell you what. I know what I want Tiffany's first program to be. I want Tiffany and Trish at Wrestle or at SummerSlam. I kind of teased it last night, a little backstage yeah. when Trish was trying to talk smack to uh, Tiffany and Tiffany wasn't having it. I hope we get Trish Stratus. I hope we get Tiffany Stratton. That would be fun. It'd be great. Maybe like a passing of the torch type moment. I don't know, but it would be fun. Sign. I, we know Trish can still go in the ring. Um, I yes. don't know if she's got any matches left under her contract, but I want to see those two go. Um, make it make it so at SummerSlam. Please make it so. How fun would that be? That'd be a huge passing of the torch match right there in my opinion. For sure it would. For sure, man. SummerSlam's got to be big. It's a stadium show. Some big stuff's got to happen. And no, there you go. That's how you start by getting it big. We've got one match for SummerSlam right now. We've got Damian Priest and Gunther. That's all we've got for SummerSlam. It's time to start making some big matches, some big moments. Trish and Tiffany, sign it up. Let's go. We have two matches, actually, because we have Nia and Bailey. Nia Jackson, and Bailey. That's right. Yep. My bad. So going into the main event, Nick, we talked last night uh, off air that this match being in the main event slot, something big has to happen. And I got to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed that nothing big really happened. There were no new bloodline members introduced there was no surprise in this match the big surprises uh and we'll talk about this after the match but the big surprises the biggest surprise was john cena we'll talk about that in a few minutes uh but overall the match itself bloodline against uh against cody rhodes kevin owens and randy orton i thought was a fun match uh I'm going to say it again. Cody Rhodes feels the need to use his finisher three times in a row. He didn't successfully do it this time, but he has to use that finisher three times in a row and it cheapens his finish. I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I, that's how I feel. Yeah. I know you're not a big fan. I know you're not a big fan of that and that's fine. Um, I felt the same way going into this. Some big's going to happen. We're going to get a new debut. They're, they're having this match here for a reason. Something big's going to happen. I think there's something big that happened was solo pinning Cody clean. Yes. When was the last that time Cody got pinned clean? 39 WrestleMania 39. Yeah. Has it, has it been that long? I mean, I think we got our, so I think we got our SummerSlam match right there with <clears throat> solo versus Cody at SummerSlam. I think that's where they're going to go. And I think that's why they had Solo get the win. And I think that's when we get the return of Roman is at SummerSlam. Maybe a return after the match. Um, I'm just, I'm speculating here. I don't know. I'm speculating. That's that's maybe, that's how I'm reading the tea leaves here as they present this on, on screen in front of us. Solo pinning Cody tells me it's Solo Cody at SummerSlam. I can agree with that. And anytime you can pin the champion clean in a non-title match... That's got to elevate you onto that uh, onto that title picture in a hurry. Yeah, I was a little and let down that something major didn't happen post match. That there wasn't a new member added. That there wasn't a run in of some sort. However, they threw us a curveball, and the curveball they threw us was Solo, who had lost all these matches, finally picked up a couple wins on TV, and just pinned the champion clean. So I think that's yes. the curveball to be seen. Uh, take away from this match. Um, I think all signs point to solo Cody at rest or excuse me at SummerSlam big outdoor stadium show and expect a big return to happen at that show. Um, Roman Reigns, maybe Rhea Ripley, maybe, maybe both, but I think a big return will happen at that show. For sure. For sure. So the other big news coming off of money in the bank that we didn't touch on because it wasn't a match because it's not in the match order that I had pulled up is John Cena will officially be retired at WrestleMania 25 or not 20, WrestleMania 2025 WrestleMania 41. Um, uh, a lot of speculation. 
Go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. No, go ahead. No, 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 no. I was waiting for you to finish. I was just going to say a lot of speculation as to who that final opponent is going to be. Um, I uh, I don't know if I'd want to have him have him uh, go against a younger talent, or if I'd want to have someone retire him from from his time, from his main run. I don't I don't really know where to go. What, who his opponents would be for that final build? I don't either. I, I don't either. I'm sitting here scratching my head since since the announcement was laid last night on the show, and we kind of went into the mode of well, who's he gonna who's he gonna have his last match against? I mean, if I had if I had to give you one name right now, I'd be Randy Orton. It should be Randy Orton. That's his last match. But okay, I, I can don't agree know, with that. I don't know if it's Randy Orton, one of his longtime foes, or if they're gonna go with somebody younger. Um, maybe it's, it's a maybe it's a Gunther. I I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, you know, you talk about long time. It's going to be, I, I think it's going to be a younger guy. I think it's going to be a younger guy. I think Cena wants to come back and do what's right. Um, you know, we had Austin theory at 39 and now Austin theory kind of have just dropped the tag titles on SmackDown and kind of disappearing into irrelevancy. Who is it going to be? Um, who is it if it's a young star? Is it going to be? Um, I think Randy Orton's the logical choice of the veterans, but of the young stars, who could it be? Let us know on socials. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Who should John Cena's last opponent be at WrestleMania uh, this coming year uh, in Vegas? Um, I don't know. I can see a lot of different people. I guess I would lean towards Orton on the main card. Uh, of people already established as a younger guy, I don't know. I would have no clue. It's going to be very interesting to see how this shakes out. For sure, for sure. Can I just throw out, you You talk about Randy Orton. Uh, speaking of his big rivalries, it's a shame that Edge is in the other company because that'd be a good name to have his final match against. I know. I, you know what? I even said this last night. I even said this last night during the show when we were watching. I wish the forbidden door was real and open between every company because during John Cena's speech that he was retiring, I would have given anything for Christian cage to come out and cut a promo on Cena in Canada, ripping on Cena and then have Christian cage <laughs> be as a final opponent. That would have been great. If they could have somehow swung a deal between WWE and AEW to had Christian cage show up last night and rip on and rip on Cena. That would have been, that would have been my moment, my chef's kiss. That's what I would love to have seen. That would have been extremely entertaining. I would have loved that. Uh, but that uh, we've talked about heat wave. We talked about money in the bank, all the happenings going on. We did. Uh, I think that's going to put a wrap on our show for tonight. Uh, I just want to say we've got a uh, couple of shows. We've got a couple weeks where we've got a couple of shows. This is one of them. Uh, Thursday, we will be back with Logan from Iron Spirit Pro. Uh, he's coming on to preview their biggest show of the year, which takes place on July 20th. Uh, after that, next Sunday, we'll be back at our normal time with SCW QC Cup holder John Bonhart going to join us. And then I announced it last, uh, last show, last week. I'm excited. A week from this coming Thursday, the 18th of July, we welcome Jake Crist, former Impact X Division champion, former Pro Wrestling Revolver world champion. I'm super excited about all those shows. We're going to have a lot of fun in the next few weeks. Uh, we may even have some run-ins from uh, some old guests coming up in the next month or so. Stay tuned. <laughs> Absolutely. Stay Looking forward to it. We got some fun stuff planned. Uh, I know you made a couple friends at the Zawa show over the weekend and maybe booked a show or two. So looking forward to that announcement coming in the coming weeks. Uh, a lot of fun things going on here at Card Subject to Change, and we are so happy you are along with us for the ride. Yes, we are. Thank you so much. If you are, uh, if you are listening to us after the fact on any audio platforms, Stop by our Facebook page. Give us a follow. Stop by our YouTube page. Give us a subscription. Like, hit the notification bell. 
Uh, we appreciate all of you who tune in weekly. Uh, you, we wouldn't be here without the fans. Uh, we wouldn't be here without our network for for frequency's sake. Uh, so thank you to, for them for giving us a platform to talk about what we love the most, and that is pro wrestling. Uh, for my tag team partner, Never Wrong Nick Bull, I am the Wizard CZ. This is Card Subject to Change, powered by Lopez Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo, and of course, protected by Jared Zook, Country Financial. We will see you Thursday uh, and back at our regular time next Sunday. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of your week.